Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Gab Chabran, uh, Priority Projects Manager with EXP. I'd like to welcome you to today's presentation as part of our virtual guest speaker series, co-hosted with the Proven Ready program. Before I introduce today's speaker, I want to briefly tell you a little bit about our organizations. EXP is a local Southern California nonprofit known as the Opportunity Engine. Why is that? Through programs like this one, EXP prepares students like yourself for a better life. Our programs help you gain experience, unlock doors, and build the confidence that you need to succeed in school, career, and life. Proven Ready helps build uh, tomorrow's uh, workforce by giving uh, high school students the opportunity to learn more uh, about college and career opportunities in business, entrepreneurship, global trade, advanced transportation, and logistics, and the opportunity to earn industry-certified credentials in those sectors. Check us out on our websites, expfuture.org and provenready.org, or follow us on social media. Now let's get started by giving a warm welcome to today's guest speaker, Juan Morales Rocha, who is a game UI UX designer based in the central coast of California, and he is born and raised in beautiful Watsonville, California. Juan graduated from the University of Southern California at Santa Cruz with a BA in art and design uh, with a special emphasis in game and playable media, as well as a BS in cognitive science, artificial intelligence, and compute, human computer interaction. As a designer with a background in game design and cognitive science, he creates unique interfaces and interaction systems that focus on player immersion and game field. He is also uh, he is currently working at Xbox uh, as a design analysis for his day job. And then he also runs an indie game studio called No Static Games with some friends on the side. Juan, good morning. How are you? Thank you for being here. Good morning, y'all. How's it going? <laughs> doing well, doing well. Uh -huh. Go ahead, take us away. For sure. Uh, so hi. Hello, Carson High School. Uh, my name is Juan Morales Rocha. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about game development, game design goes by many names. Um, I hope uh, that, you know, y'all get something out of this. And I'll say, you know, um, if, if there's questions in the middle, feel free to interrupt me. Like happy, you know, ha hopefully this could be a sort of dialogue or conversation. But also if you're, you know, if you want to save until the end, that's OK, too. But I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'll go ahead and dive right in. Uh, and yeah, we'll go ahead and get started uh, and I'll talk about my journey. Uh, so. Let's see here. All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, so a little bit about me. So again, my name is Juan Morales Rocha. Uh, I was born uh, in uh, a little agricultural town, Watsonville, uh, California, uh, in the central coast uh, of California. Uh, and you know, in Watsonville, it's known for strawberries, Martinelli's, if you have ever had Martinelli's, <laughs> apple cider, uh, that sort of where it's from. Um, but yeah, in terms of the, you know, basically in terms of my background, um, I, I had sort of an interesting upbringing, I would say. Uh, so for my K through 12 education, um, I actually would move around every six months. Uh, so both of my parents work as migrant farm workers. Uh, so that, what that would mean is that we would move around following the harvest of the strawberries. Um, and every, every, basically every year we would move to, uh, to a different place. Um, and I, I would go to two different schools for every grade I was in. So I guess it's like 24 schools, uh, which is definitely an interesting experience uh, to go through. But I think that it's, uh, it's definitely, it made me, I think, you know, be able to adapt to, to certain circumstances and and sort of just learn uh, to, to go with the flow as, as much as possible. Um, so yeah, so in terms of starting, you know, with with my path to game development. So I think, you know, back back in the day, back before the year 2000, no, yeah. Uh, so back in 1998, I think um, the, the, the Game Boy Color came out and, and Pokemon Yellow was one of the first games that I remember playing um, as a little kid. So while I was born here in California, my family moved to Mexico when I was uh, about a year old, uh, and we didn't come back to the States until I was about five uh, and ready to start kindergarten. So at this point, I didn't know any English. Uh, it's like, you know, Spanish being my first language. Uh, so, I, you know, I like to credit Pokemon with helping me practice my reading skills and getting a better understanding of the English language. So that was the first game that I played. So fast forward a decade later, and um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in high school taking my first graphic design course. I think this was like maybe my sophomore year. Uh, junior year, maybe. So uh, at this point, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do as an adult. Uh, like, I don't know if folks, you know, in, in the room have a similar experience where your parents want you to be a doctor or a lawyer, uh, you know, or, you know, the traditional things. Um, but I think for me, this was sort of like my first um, experience stepping into doing something more creative uh, and, and sort of learning and starting to develop this sort of interest in technology and design uh, by taking different elective classes. So I took like some graphic design courses, photography, 
uh, computer-aided design or CAD were some of the things that were offered at my school. Um, and that's sort of what started me in that path with about learning more about like computers, technology, and that sort of stuff. Um, from that interest in technology uh, and design, I found uh, that UC Santa Cruz or the University of California Santa Cruz uh, offered a computer science game design major. Uh, and I decided to apply. So I was actually admitted in fall of 2012, uh, which was great. So I started off as a computer science game design major. Uh, and then it wasn't until the next year, 2013, where I made my actual first game uh, in the program. And it was a really awesome experience to see sort of like my work come to life. So yeah, this, this is like the, the, the little cover screen for the, the first game uh, that I worked on. It was called Pirata Infinitum. Uh, it's, <laughs> I had this weird thing where I would like translate my game titles to like Latin using Google Translate when I was like in my first year of college, which was wild. But yeah, basically Infinity Prior is the English title uh, for this game. Uh, and that was like the very first project that I ever worked on from like beginning to like from beginning to end and, and delivered that out. Um, so it wasn't all great though, all the time. <laughs> uh, and that, you know, and that's okay. But basically by the end of my second year at the university, um, I was struggling a bit with my computer science game design major. I was failing a bunch of my classes and having to retake a lot of like my math and programming courses just from like having, you know, there's a lot of stuff that that just, you know, sort of happens when you're transitioning from high school to to college. So um, I was dealing with a lot of that sort of stuff. And by my, the end of my second year, I was doing so bad that, that I almost got kicked out of school. Um, however, after talking with a friend of mine, I decided to change my major to cognitive science where I would be learning about how our brains work and how people connect with technology. Um, so, you know, from my experience with Pokemon, with Pokemon Yellow in the beginning, I think the thing that really attracted me to want to make games for myself is like trying to make people feel certain emotions or feel a certain sort of way when they're playing a game. So I thought that cognitive science would be a good transition or in between of like, even if I can't make games, maybe I could like study how people go through them and experience them. Um, so after a year of studying cognitive science, a new game design major was started at UC Santa Cruz called the Art and Design Games and Playable Media Major, or AGPM for short. Um, while I really wanted to make games, uh, I learned that programming wasn't really my strong suit. Even now, like, you know, a few years later, it's not, I, I know how to do a little bit more of it, but still it's something that if I could get someone to help me with, I definitely do that. Um, but, you know, despite it not being my strong suit, um, I, I still wanted to make games. And I thought that a focus more on the art and design aspects of it would be a perfect fit for me. Um, so then finally, after five years of attending UC Santa Cruz, uh, I was actually able to graduate with two degrees, which was really, really awesome. So I was able to get my uh, BA in art and design and games and playable media, as well as cognitive science uh, with a focus in AI and HCI, human computer interaction, which is a mouthful. I know. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, I, I was a first generation college graduate, which basically means that both of my parents didn't go to school. Um, so it was a really big accomplishment uh, that, that me, uh, that my family and I were really proud of. Uh, so here's like a picture that I have of like my the graduation cap that I made, which is just like a Photoshop version of the Pokemon title screen. As you can see, it sort of carries out as a common theme through throughout most of the stuff uh, that that I experienced. So, yeah, so that's sort of I would say that sort of concludes the journey or or at least for educational wise, that's sort of, uh, you know, where, where I ended up. Like the last thing that I studied was at UC Santa Cruz. Uh, I thinking about gra like graduate school, but I haven't gone there yet. Um, in terms of the games that I worked on, uh, the the stuff that that I mostly have sort of in my portfolio right now are like side projects and things that I worked on during school. Uh, so uh, the, you know, so some of these sites like this is a game called Juanito Navalito, which was an interesting. Uh, like bilingual games. So, so some of the, the text, like the blue text is in Spanish, the yellow uh, on the screenshot is in English. And it was an interesting sort of experiment with like having a hybrid, instead of being, you know, selecting a, a certain language, having both simultaneously in the game. Uh, so that was a cool experiment uh, that, that we worked on with some friends. Um, this next one is called Indigestible. And this was a, a, a game jam project. So I don't know, are, if, are folks familiar with game jams here or no? Probably not, right? So yeah, so if you're familiar with hackathons, uh, and if you're not, let me explain it. So basically a hackathon or a game jam is sort of like uh, uh, a quick round of working on a project related to a theme. So, you know, in a hackathon, it's usually like an app or other creative solution in game jams specifically, it's usually like a 48 hour time period where you work on something. So for this game jam, it was the, we were given the theme of passage. So there was people who were working on, um, sort of like projects that had to do with people crossing like the world uh, on a boat or 
getting from point A to point B uh, was basically, you know, a lot of a lot of other projects. So I, I decided to make a game about a piece of corn that travels through the digestive system. Uh, and it was a, a really interesting project because this was the first um, solo dev project that I made. And by solo dev, I basically mean that I, I did all the, the programming, all the art for it. So it was a really fun experience to just be like, what does it take to make you know a game from beginning to end all by myself? And it was a lot. It was it was very hard. It was a lot of work, but it was a really engaging and interesting experience. And then I also even ended up making this little three D printed like arcade joystick for it that I called the controller. <laughs> and it was like so basically designing like a three D controller to go along with it. Um, you know, this was like right before COVID actually started. Uh, so I actually was able to go around um, when I was living in Santa Cruz and take it around uh, different like, you know, artist alley type of things and people would play it. And it was really cool, a way to showcase the game uh, there. Um, this other project that I worked on, uh, Why Did the Chicken Cross the Road was a re really little mini project uh, that I made, but it was sort of my first step into what's called serious games. So nowadays, you know, a lot of games exist in sort of these different bubbles. And uh, you have games that are more like, you know, your entertainment stuff, the things that you see sort of like the big AAA, uh, you know, like your Call of Duties and your and your FIFA's, you know, over there for, for, for fun, right? Um, there's also sort of like a separate uh, section of games called like, you know, serious games or games for change that are games that sort of tackle different sort of um, like, I, I don't say like necessarily political issues, but they have more of a social commentary aspect to them so that was this particular project was sort of my first attempt at making something like that and it was really really interesting too to, to work on that space you know make instead of trying to make something that's you know simply fun which again is which is actually really hard in itself is trying to make something that that has sort of like a, a another message or, or a hidden meaning uh, behind the stuff that people are experiencing um the latest sort of project that I finished is this one called Ole Torobo, which is a, a robotic bullfighting game uh, where you're like, you basically, it's like, it takes place in like future Mexico. And then you have like bulls, uh, like these robot bulls that like shoot horns at you and you dodge. There's like slow-mo and stuff. It's very fun. So this was a 10 week project that I did as part of a, uh, this program called Gameheads Oakland. Uh, or so Gameheads is a, is an organization that's sort of like, I guess the best way to describe it is almost like like a youth center um, <laughs> that that offers game design classes for folks uh, for free. Uh, so basically, if you're between like 15 and 25 or something, I think you could sign up for free. So before, or they're usually based in Oakland, but because of the pandemic, they actually allowed some students to join remotely. So I would say if if any of y'all are interested in making games like for real, for real, <laughs> like right now, uh, trying to get in contact with the folks of Gameheads Oakland is a really great way to one, to start learning about different things and as well as getting connected to their network. Like they have, uh, what's cool about uh, Gameheads Oakland is that they have professionals that teach their classes. So it's like people who work in like the Bay Area uh, at all these different companies um, are, are the ones who are basically teaching you, uh, which is really interesting and it's free. So <laughs> it's awesome. Um, the, the final sort of project that, I, that I'm working on, or actually currently working on right now, uh, is Supersonic Rhyme Chamber. So Supersonic Rhyme Chamber is a VR rap and rhythm game uh, where music has been outlawed, and your goal is to try to bring music back uh, to, to the planet. Um, and this project is, is, is a really interesting one where um, last year, uh, I want to say September, actually, yeah, about a year ago from, from like right now, today, um, I applied to this program called the Oculus Launchpad program, which is basically a program that, um, you know, a bunch of people apply, they pick 100 developers uh, to be a part of a cohort, and then people pitch different projects for them. And then if they like your project, they basically give you some funding to keep, keep working on it. So uh, Supersonic Grind Chamber was the project that I worked on. And uh, back in March of this year, we were actually announced as one of the grant recipients. So they uh, gave us $25,000 to keep working on the project um, on, on the side. And it's, yeah, so it's, we've basically been working on it. It's been really fun uh, so far. And and yeah, that's that's been, that's sort of like the, the, the thing that's most on my mind right now is this particular project here. Um, Yes, in terms of jobs that I've had, I've had a, uh, a lot of different jobs, you know, during school, like basically anything before I graduated from college, I did a bunch of different things. I worked as a janitor at a daycare center. I got a job as a graphic designer on campus, as well as doing some uh, freelance work uh, on the side as a graphic designer while I was still, still a student. Uh, and then I also worked as a, at an IT help desk. So I help people with their computer problems. They would call our office and do that. And that was basically all all before I graduated college, I had all these sort of different roles, right? Then after graduating college, um, my game design major advisor 
uh, asked me if I'd be interested in applying for his job uh, since he was going to move on to the man manager role. And he'd seen that I was involved in a bunch of different organizations on campus. Uh, as well as volunteering for different speaking opportunities, kind of like this. Uh, so like when, when high school students would go visit UC Santa Cruz, I was one of the students that was like, sure, like, you know, I'm happy to, to chat with them and talk about my experience there. Uh, so yeah, I went ahead and applied and I got the job. Um, I, I worked as the art and, art, art and Design Games and Playable Media Advisor for three years. Uh, and then during this time, I was actually working on, you know, the, a lot of the projects that you saw, I was spending my time, my afternoons and, and weekends working on um, these side projects sort of to build up my portfolio in hopes of you know getting a role in the industry someday uh, so now so actually recently about six months ago i i went through the whole process of interviewing uh and you know applying interviewing for this role at xbox and i got it so uh for about six months i've been working at at the xbox game studios publishing team as a design analyst so it was really interesting to apply to this job because i if you google design analyst it's like doesn't <laughs> there's not a lot of stuff uh that tells you what exactly it is i used to think it was like data analysis and this other stuff but it's not and i can tell you it's actually a really cool job uh, so my job as a design analyst at xbox is to research games through play so i play a lot of games uh, I write reports on them and then I present those in like a slideshow like this. Uh, so that's that's literally I think that's the, the simplest um, <laughs> description about what my role is, but it is a lot of playing games, which I didn't even as someone who studied game design, I didn't think that was a job out there where they would want you to just play games and write about them. But that's what my job is at Xbox. And that's sort of what I do. So it's definitely a really interesting uh way to you know be working in games like not necessarily making stuff during my day job but just learning a lot about the process of game design and sort of identifying key um key things that make games fun or interesting or unique and presenting that to like the the directors that are part of the studio uh, so that's what i do for my day job um and then in the in the evenings and afternoons, uh, my title is Game UI UX Designer for No Static Games, which is the company that we're uh, that we're using to to work on Supersonic Grand Chamber, which is the VR game that I mentioned. So I'm like the creative director, Game UI UX Designer person, but basically, yeah, like a Game UI UX Designer, like or at least the, the stuff that I'm doing for this role is like UI stands for User Interface and UX stands for user experience. So UI user interface is basically like buttons uh, or like the screens that appear uh, in the game and sort of like, you know, someone has to design those menus and that's usually this person, whoever's the UI designer who designed some of that. And then UX is sort of more of like the flow or information architecture of things. So it's like, if someone, when someone boots up a game, you know, what's like the first screen they see? What's the next one and the next one? So that's sort of what a UX designer would, would work on and sort of try to figure out what the, the nice part of it, you know, like basically make that flow of, of going through the game uh, as enjoyable as possible for whoever's playing it. Um, yeah, and I think that summarizes uh, the jobs there. Um, so yeah, I think the, the other thing that I wanted to sort of touch on, you know, maybe because I worked as an advisor for three years, is just some some uh, little pieces of advice that I think are helpful uh, for anyone who's trying to join the industry at some point, uh, or you know, do games, or just you know, in life in general. I think some of these are applicable to a lot of different things. So I think the first one is it's never too late or early to start learning. Uh, and I think that this is something that one of my professors at UC Santa Cruz would say a lot. Uh, it's like nowadays, uh, all you need really is a computer to, to start making like a digital game. And if you want to just make games in general, sometimes you don't even need a computer. Uh, there's this thing called paper prototyping where you sort of like write down your rules and stuff and then you can move stuff around with like you know, index cards and stuff uh, to sort of get an idea of how like the game will feel once you actually make it. So I think it's, it's it, the key thing here is like, you know, y'all are young still. So it's okay if, you know, you could start learning right now, but at the same time, it's never too late. So, you know, if you go to school, you do something else, you know, later 20, 30 years down the line, if you wanted to switch into games, that's something that people do as well. Like it's, it's not something that you have to like decide right now, but obviously if you, you know, if you want to learn, like you have that ability to do that now. Um, the second one is just try your best not to burn bridges or be a bad person. I think that's just uh, a good piece of bad or a good piece of advice for just life. Um, I think it's like one of the things, especially with the games industry, is that the community is very small. Uh, so I know for I could speak uh, directly on like my job at Xbox. I had a friend of mine who um, uh, basically I asked them if they had if they could write me a referral, and they're like, sure, like I'll, I'll write you a referral. And they knew someone else who worked at the in that team that was like, yeah, okay, yeah, like I'll I'll put in a good word for you. So I like to thank both of them for basically. I think if it wasn't for their help, I might have not gotten the role at Xbox. So I think it's basically one of those things that try to be nice to people, be excellent to one another, 
And hopefully uh, it'll, you know, <laughs> it'll pay off in the long run. Um, and then the final one is just enjoy your youth. Like, like I said, like y'all are young still. It's okay if you don't have things figured out. Like, I think even for me, like I went through school and through college and it wasn't really until like my last year that I was like, oh yeah, UI UX design is a thing I can do in games. Like, you know, I was sort of doing my two degrees thinking about, do I become a, like, you know, like a user researcher in like tech or do I be a game designer instead? Cause I have these two things, but it wasn't until like the very end that I knew exactly what, uh, you know, sort of the path, the way that I wanted to follow. And even then, like my, my job at Xbox isn't necessarily that, but I'm pulling from everything that I've learned to, to do that job. So that's just been really interesting. So yeah, I would say it's okay. You know, enjoy your, you're young, <laughs> have, have a good time, play games for fun. Uh, and and have a good time. So yeah, I think that that sort of uh, summarizes most of the stuff there. I think this this final uh, slide here is sort of a little um, game dev resource list that I put together. So on on this at this link, you'll find like a Google Doc that has links to different sort of resources. So um, the the first one here is a game development cheat sheets, which basically cover different roles in game dev. So you know, for me as a game UI UX designer, I could speak on that. But there's like you know, you could be a programmer, you can be an artist. Uh, you could be a producer and all these different roles have different sort of like details and descriptions about what they do. Uh, these cheat sheets that that are linked there, um, I think have a really good uh, just sort of summary about what the roles entail and also like books or things to like start building your knowledge about that if you're interested in that. Uh, so I think that's really good. Uh, the next one is sort of, uh, it's a video called How to Make a Bitsy Game. Uh, and I, this is actually a video that I made like last year. Like, so like, not to like promote my YouTube channel. <laughs> I, was, like, I have one video on my YouTube channel, which is this one. Uh, but basically, if, if you're interested in making games, I made this for the Latinx Games Festival. Um, like that, that's a, it was something that I volunteered for. And I think it's a really good, or I try to make it so that basically anyone, like if you're in middle school, high school, whatever, and you're just learning about trying to make a game, I think Bitsy is a really good tool that's just on the browser. So you don't need to download anything. And the video, I try to make it really easy to just start messing around with it. And I think that's sort of like the, the way that you learn the most with anything is just messing around with it. Cause you know, you could spend all the time reading books or watching YouTube videos and be in the sort of limbo of like, you're gaining knowledge, but unless you're doing it, you're not gonna be building your craft. So I think that's really important. Um, and yeah, and then there's some, uh, also some other really great resources at, at that link, uh, which I def definitely recommend you check out if you're interested in learning more. Um, and yeah, and I think, you know, in the final, <laughs> in the wise words of Parappa, uh, we just gotta believe, you know, you don't, you don't have to know that you wanna make games right now. It's okay if you change your mind or, you know, if you start it, change your mind or whatever. I think just really trying to, you know, think that stuff is gonna work out. And I think that's sort of what happened to me. Like I mentioned, right, like my journey, to to get to where I am today wasn't super easy <laughs> uh like you know especially the university like was, was definitely hard but you know we got through it we persevered and we're here today so yeah we just got to believe y'all and that's it that is my presentation thank you all for your time <laughs> wow okay uh thank you Juan um uh ending it with a paratha quote too I think that's uh you can't you can't go wrong with that um I just want to thank everybody uh for showing up today we are at 150 uh attendees right oh, wow. now so these are <laughs> these are huge numbers uh as far as that goes so I appreciate everybody for uh showing up and, and signing on um we got a little bit of time left um so there were a couple of questions in the chat if mm -hmm. other folks have questions in the chat uh feel free to just drop them in there um javier uh uh rosenloff sorry if i'm if i'm not saying that right wanted to know if your job uh was uh in terms of like when you're reviewing the games for xbox is that mm. is that part of uh are you considered a beta tester in that respect or is it different not quite right so it's okay. like th there's a there's like a there's a job in its own called like a like a qa tester or quality assurance where i think they're more of like you know those sort of folks that test the game for like bugs and make sure that things are working my job is more of a like how do i say it's like it's more like competitor analysis so like, it's like my job, it's like, so right now, like literally my, my latest assignment has been playing Final Fantasy 14 for like 40 hours a week, which is wild. So it's like, it's playing uh, like, you know, like an MMO and being like, okay, what's interesting about Final Fantasy 14? And, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's not like the reason I got this job, right? Or part of it, it's like I studied games, right? So I could speak to like mechanics and different things, things like that. So there's definitely a lot of... Um, 
Yeah, it's like, it's definitely a weird, because it's like, it's funny, because I, I only know one other person that has this job, and it's a person that works there. And what's, you know, what's funny about like my job there is like, there's probably not a lot of transferable skills <laughs> that, uh, that I could, you know, take from this job to somewhere else. But it nonetheless, it's a really fun job, uh, where I'm like, I'm, I'm playing games as my like day job. And it's really interesting to, uh, to just have that experience and connect with really cool people uh, that, that are part of the team, for sure. Great, great. And then Eva had a question also. She wanted to know what uh, what the exper- what the interview process was like at Xbox. Was right. It difficult. What skills did you have to showcase? Yeah. So it was it's really interesting because I think the majority of jobs have you know I, I worked on my portfolio a lot to try to get it ready for you know whatever job I'm applying for. But then at the end of the day, it wasn't so much my portfolio that they were looking at, just sort of like the skills that I that I had. Uh, so. The, the job, the interview process itself, I wouldn't say it was necessarily hard. It was just really different than other stuff that I've gone through. So it was actually five different interviews with five directors on the team. So instead of sitting down for like a group type of interview where, you know, they just, <laughs> they, they had me there for like an hour. I had five different 30 minute interviews with different people. And then just trying to, they would ask me questions like, what would you do in this situation? Or how do you analyze this game? Like, or whatever, like just sort of like on the spot sort of stuff. So I think, I don't, you know, honestly, I don't think I did that great on my interviews. I think some were better than others. Like there was one of my interviewers, we ended up talking for like an hour because I was talking about my VR rap game and he was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, do you want to talk more about it? Like I got time. And I was like, sure, that's cool. So it's, you know, it's sort of like from the different stuff, like I think the stuff that I sort of shared was like, I'm really passionate about games. I like making games, even though I wasn't necessarily working directly in games. And I think they sort of like that, that I, you know, I sort of found different ways to connect uh, with the industry in different ways, despite not yet working there. So, yeah. Great. Great. Um, Okay. So we're getting a lot of comments in the chat, folks. Let's try to keep it professional. Obviously I know, I know we're all excited to hear from Juan. (laughs) Yo, 20. Uh, I'm just like, I don't know. I want to know, you know, for real, like, they're the, the serious questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know what script, uh, uh, do you know what script to use? Like scripting language? Uh, maybe? I think so. Cause I, somebody I mean, made a mention to Java as well. So I think. All right. So, something. so yeah. So I learned I, in school, we had to learn like uh, JavaScript, Java, uh, some C sharp right now because I use unity mostly to work and stuff. And again, like I'm not a, I'm not a great programmer. I definitely have friends that are better at that than me, but C sharp is the one that we use in unity uh, for the most part. So I think that, you know, if you're trying to learn to do stuff in games, that's probably a really great one to, to basically start working on. If, if you're you basically, if you want to go down that path and nowadays there's a bunch of different resources for just learning, you know, game programming essentially and, and starting out doing that sort of stuff. So I think that's definitely a really, that, that's the one that I use basically on the day to day. So, yeah. Great. Great. Um, okay. Any other questions for Juan uh, now? Juan, actually, I had a question for yeah. you um, What's up? to kind of go back to your, um, uh, your game design experience and mm-hmm. tying it to sort of, you know, your upbringing and scene mm-hmm. and, and, and what have you. Um, you mentioned, you know, you come from a family of migrant farm workers mm-hmm. and, and also uh, you, it seems like, you know, you, you, um, you hold your, your, your Latinx identity, you know, it's a, it's a big part of who you are. Right. Um, could you talk a little bit more about how both of those sort of mm-hmm. formative experiences sort of play out in, uh, sure. in your game design? Yeah, I think it's one of those things like um, that. It's sort of like the people that I sort of surround myself with are are people that are very much trying to bring that sort of level of representation to the games, to games nowadays, right? And I think more and more we've been seeing that. Like, so I think actually a really key experience that I I forgot to mention in the in the talk uh, in the presentation was that in 2016, me and some friends started an org uh, at UC Santa Cruz, a student organization called Diversity in Games, Uh, and we like sort of brought in speakers. And basically, the goal of this organization was to try and um, and imp- increase or improve the diversity of not only like character representation inside games, but also like, you know, uh, people of color working in games since like those numbers are still probably not that great. <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, basically with anything, uh, with any sort of diversity in- initiative, hopefully it gets better. I actually had a chance to go to the White House with that organization, which is really cool to go talk wow. about, uh, like, you know, basically g- like, game laws and how like the perception of games within like you know with like addiction and that sort of stuff which is really cool that was a really cool experience uh to go through um and i think it's yeah like i would say for me it's like 
you know, I think being, you know, it's, and it's, you'll get like different uh, sort of like comments from different people. I think for me, it's definitely a key thing of like trying not to forget my roots, sort of where I come from. And, you know, sometimes, you know, being Latino or whatever, it, it doesn't play into the games that I'm making, right? Like, you know, sometimes it's, 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 it's part of my identity, but it doesn't have to necessarily tie in exactly. Like I'm not trying to force it, but it's really nice when it sort of weaves in like naturally uh, and, and organically into what I'm doing. So for like the bowl game, that, that I was working on the, for the last 10 weeks is really like, oh, I have like this music or like this artist that makes this type of music that I think is really interesting that would go with this game. Or like, oh, I really like like the the old school, like 19, like, you know, 40s, like film posters of like Mexican cinema. Like maybe we could include that in the game. So it's sort of like, I think with anything really like, no matter like what's, you know, if you're a game designer, a lot of the stuff that you put into your game comes directly from your own life experiences. So whatever your identity is, it's, it's tied into like, you know, what, like, you know, something like, cause I don't, I don't know really any other person besides my brother <laughs> who also does games uh, that has moved, you know, moved around, uh, you know, like for their whole like childhood or whatever. Uh, and I've been like thinking about like, Oh, is there maybe, maybe a game I can make about that? Or is there some, some, something there that I could bring to, to, um, basically the, an experience that's interesting there. So, yeah, I think that's one of those things that, that I definitely, it's like, it's part of me, no matter whether I like it or not. Uh, so sometimes it comes into play, sometimes it doesn't. Great, great. Uh, Eva also wants to know, uh, and yes, we see all the Rick and Morty comments, guys. We're all <laughs> big fans of the show. Um, uh, what is the most difficult aspect of your job? I think the the hardest part of my job is actually, it's funny enough, it's like, I think there's two aspects. And I asked, actually asked this question during my interview process, like, what's the most difficult part of this role? And one the the most difficult part that they mentioned or that they told me about was that it's very a very isolated role. Funny enough, so I, my job is actually remote. So everyone in Xbox and my team is from like Seattle or they're in Seattle, Washington. I'm in California, uh, so my job is remote all the time. I don't have like you know I'm not like hanging out with people. We're we're also in COVID too, so that maybe that's part of it. But I think like, at least for the duration of my role, it's going to be remote, and then we'll see you know afterwards if they want to continue if I go to Seattle or not. So I think the isolation part is one of it. The other part is endurance. <laughs> for playing the same game for a really long time. So personally for me, I, I like playing a bunch of different games all the time. So it's like, even like once a week, I'll just buy like, you know, a $10 indie game that like no one's heard of uh, to just be like, I wonder what kind of cool stuff they did. And that's uh, like, I'll play it in a little burst for like a couple hours. Like, oh, that was really cool. Like that was a fun experience. And, and I really liked how they did X, Y, Z. But then having to switch from a thing, you know, basically playing little game like games for like an hour or two bursts to like, all right, I'm gonna sit down for eight hours and play Final Fantasy and progress and take notes. It's definitely an interesting, uh, a different way to explore games. And it's one of those funny things where it's like, the thing that was like my hobby, the thing that I you know, love playing, it's like, now I like, it's one of those things that I see or that I do for work. And I obviously it's games, so I still have fun with it, but it's also like, I can't just play the game to be like, oh, this is fun. I was like, I'll play the game. And then I'm like, all right, let me like note down some interesting points from like the last few hours of gameplay that I maybe want to include in my presentation or my report. So I think that's definitely the hard part of like, not just letting myself fall into the immersion and then be like, Oh wait, sorry. I have a job that I'm doing, and I'm not just playing this for fun. So finding that balance there, I think, is really interesting, especially since I'm working from home. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I think that is all the questions that we have. Eva, anything else that you wanted to say as we sort of wrap up? No, but I wanted to say, Juan, <laughs> that you are definitely making me rethink my career choices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gamer too, she, she, and, and a huge Pokemon fan. Awesome. Yeah, I actually am. So it's pretty funny that you're just playing Final Fantasy 14 all day. That sounds right. like the dream job. Right. Um, <laughs> I wanted to say thank you personally. Your personality is stellar. Thank you for taking the time to talk to our students. This is definitely, I know, something you know with Twitch and streaming. This is something that they're very interested in. Um, and I just want to personally thank all the ESET teachers. Uh, Miss uh, Boyd, our lead for being on today. I really appreciate you taking the time and opening up your classroom. And thank you students. Unfortunately, I had to turn off the chat because we were getting a little unprofessional, uh, <laughs> but thanks for those of you who were respectful and were engaged. We really appreciate that. Definitely. Also wanna give a special shout out to our, our Proven Ready team members. Uh, I believe they're all uh, in the audience too as well for, uh, co-hosting co this opportunity with us. Um, again, we saw some really great numbers here today. So I just wanna say uh, thank you to everybody who showed up and for engaging uh, as well as thank you to Juan uh, for sharing your wonderful and great story. Um, we truly appreciate it. Thank sure. you. Of course.
course. Yeah. And I'll say like, I don't know if, if there, if y'all get questions after the fact, but yeah, if folks, if there's some that arise somewhere and y'all want to email them to me, happy to answer them through there uh, if needed. So yeah, yeah go just, ahead. Uh, yeah. We'll uh, I'll uh, have Eva share out your, uh, your contact info. For sure. Again. Perfect. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thanks y'all. All right. Thanks everybody. All right. See you. Take care.